Am I the a-hole for refusing to get rid of my Harry Potter-themed bookshelf? I'm having a bit of family drama and need a reality check to see if I am being unreasonable here. I really need the perspective of LGBT plus sensitive individuals because the drama surrounds transphobia perpetrated by JK Rowling. My stepdaughter is going through a pretty tough time. The last couple of years have been really rough on her. She has been dealing with bullying at school, being held back a year, not getting along with her mom's new husband, self-harm, and identity issues. There is lots of questioning about her sexuality and gender. We have been working on getting her a good mental health team of doctors and therapists to help her navigate all of this. Please know we aren't throwing her to the wolves or the internet to deal with it all herself. I've been in her life since she was seven. We've always had a pretty good, though not terribly close, relationship. I have not taken on a parental role, but I have always tried to make myself available for her. Until last year, her mom had primary custody, and her dad had weekends with alternating holidays. Last year, due to the issues with her school and mom's house, my stepdaughter requested that custody arrangements be changed. One of the biggest points of contention is my Harry Potter fandom, particularly the bookcase, and my supposed transphobia, due to my apparently wrong stance when it comes to the politics regarding trans issues in our country. I grew up in the heyday. So many of my childhood and teen memories are tied to the franchise. My friends and I were all really into it. We attended midnight book releases, dressed up in costume for movie releases, threw Harry Potter-themed parties when we wanted to hang out, etc. In many ways, it shaped the course of my entire life. Those same friends and I joined our high school's botany club because herbology was cool. That unlocked a lifelong passion of mine and my career is working with plants. Over the years, I've collected quite a bit of memorabilia, many of which are gifts, and they have always been displayed on my most prized possession. A monstrously large custom bookcase my grandfather, a former woodworker, built for me when I was a teenager. I love this thing. The shelves are live edge black walnut slabs. All around the casing, my grandpa carved beautiful Harry Potter themed imagery. Owls, cauldrons, shooting stars, lightning bolts, an adorable little rat at the bottom, nibble marks from said rat, etc. It's both sentimental and valuable. The slabs of walnut for the shelves alone would be pushing a grand, let alone attempting to value the hand-carved craftsmanship. The bookcase has always been proudly displayed in my home. It currently lives in our living room. During one of our family therapy sessions, my stepdaughter expressed that seeing my Harry Potter shelf made her feel really uncomfortable because of the author, and that she was really disappointed in me and her father for being so supportive of a bigot. I apologized for making her feel uncomfortable in her own home and said that I would take down the Harry Potter stuff. So I packed up all the Harry Potter themed merchandise off the shelves. I made sure I didn't have the books or anything on display that said Harry Potter anywhere. I bought some LED grow lights and converted the bookcase into a plant shelf to display succulents. I bought some witchy but not overtly Harry Potter themed pots for the little guys so they'd go with the shelf. This was not an acceptable compromise for my stepdaughter and has remained a point of contention. With my stepdaughter hurling that I, or we, referring to my husband, broke a promise by saying we would get rid of the Harry Potter stuff, I tried to explain to my stepdaughter that, while I do not agree with J.K. Rowling's political stance at all, the media has a special place in my heart because of my childhood association with it and that the shelf was very important to me because it was a gift from my grandpa. But she maintains that none of that should matter because in 2024, it is nothing but a symbol of transphobia and hate. At first, my husband was supportive of me and my desire to keep my bookcase, but lately, the arguments are wearing on him and he asked me if I would reconsider keeping it in the living room, suggesting we rent a storage unit to house it in. After the most recent blow-up about it, I kind of lost my temper. I didn't yell or anything, but I did very firmly tell my stepdaughter that this is my home and my bookshelf stays. If it is such a big problem for her, she can always go back to live with her mother. I knew it was a low blow pretty much as soon as I said it. I quickly apologized, but it was out there. My stepdaughter has been on an emotional downward spiral. My husband and I have been arguing almost non-stop. I think it is mostly stress because he is at his wit's end with how to help his daughter, but he is becoming pretty mean and nasty towards me, telling me to grow up and just get rid of the fucking bookcase. I know I was a dick for saying my stepdaughter could always go back to live with her mom, 
and I suspect that will be the main topic at hand in our next family therapy session. But am I really being unreasonable in wanting to keep my beloved bookcase? Thank you, everyone. Honestly, thank you for those who shared their insight and advice, and thank you to the people who have asked me hard questions that made me think, especially those who asked, what matters more, a bookcase or my child? I've been reflecting really hard on what my bookcase means to me and why it is so important. I'm hitting some deep truths I don't think I was ready to recognize about how I really feel about my relationship with my stepdaughter. All in all, I think we just need to shelve things until our next therapy session. I'll see myself out. Update. Someone asked if I could update the situation, and I'll try my best to summarize the past several weeks. My husband and I spoke about the situation. He apologized for being snappish with me and agreed that SD was being unreasonable about the bookcase. He ultimately agreed to back me about it. He and I are just as tight as we ever have been. I once again apologized to my SD for the remark I made out of frustration about her moving back with her mom. I reiterated that our home is her home too, and she is always welcome here. Even though families sometimes fight and disagree, we are family. But the general argument about HP, JK Rowling, and my bookcase continued to escalate for a couple weeks, and then the discontent about that started to bleed over into complaints about me. She started to be more disrespectful and sarcastic. During all of this, we were still attending our family therapy sessions. Our therapist was pretty certain that the misbehavior was anxiety-related and didn't suggest that we give in to the demands to have the bookcase removed. She wanted to just keep working on the things we all have been doing. Well, South Dakota's disrespectful attitude hit a climax. She called me the C-word and some other choice things within my husband's earshot. My husband honestly kind of lost it on her. I don't think I have ever seen him that angry before. He was bright red and his veins were popping as he marched her to her room and declared, you will not speak to my wife in such a way. This was probably the first time my SD had ever seen her dad angry, let alone anger directed at her. It left her pretty shaken, like that was her rock bottom. We ended up needing to do a couple emergency session with her counselor because there was concern about her relapsing with some self-destructive issues she has been working on. But that incident lead to us having a breakthrough. Her counselor invited my husband and I into one of her sessions, and she had a bit of a breakdown. Basically, she was dealing with a lot of existential dread and a lot of fear due to politics and it being an election year. That ended up being an excellent opening for us to bond. This is going to sound silly, but I was able to pull up my social media timelines from 2016, and I showed her some of the things I had written or had shared with me back then. She was able to see that I shared a lot of the same fears that she has, so we have all had some really big talks about things like feeling helpless when things are out of your control, about disengaging from the media machine for your own mental health, etc. Things have been on the upswing since then. Before she left for her mom's this past weekend, she even gave me a Mother's Day gift, an adorable little planter that says, Caution, Mandrakes. I love it. I put one of my favorite props in it and it is front and center on the bookcase now. 